Guess who's back? I had ghosted all of you. Or maybe like an Irish goodbye because I guess I'm coming back. Ghosting, you just like disappear and that's it. But I'm back and I want to give you all an update because a few of you actually messaged me about where I went or what, what I was doing or if everything was okay. And first off, thank you so much uh, for caring about me. I truly feel honored that in this internet world of everyone kind of doing their own thing and just like trying to focus on their own life, a few of you reached out. I know that it has been a few months since I've been here and my last video was about my surgery. So maybe it does feel like a fair thing to ask of where I went after surgery because I kind of just stopped posting. The simple answer is my camera broke, which if you watched my last video, you probably could tell because the video quality was not great because I was trying to use different cameras that I have that just don't work so well for vlogging because of lighting and just all that stuff. Cause I'm not a great editor and I'm not about to start like changing colors and doing lighting stuff and like setting up lighting for my vlogs. So that was the simplest answer is my camera broke and I took it as a sign from the universe that I probably needed to take some time to focus on myself, especially post surgery recovery, because it was really hard. Yes, the surgery itself went really well. I think I mentioned in my last video, I actually haven't watched it recently, so I don't really know everything I told you. So I'll just give you a quick little update about the endometriosis surgery had the laparoscopic surgery, they removed endometriosis and other inflamed tissue. They tested all of it because there was some concern that it could have been precancerous cells or cancerous cells because um, cancer runs in my family. My mom had breast cancer. And if you have a hormonal based cancer in the family, it gets to be a bit more stressful for your offspring genetically. And endometriosis is high estrogen, which can lead to cancer. But thankfully, I am not, there's nothing in there that's precancerous or cancerous. So that's like a big relief. That was a big stress for me was just trying to figure out if that was a part of what was going on on top of the endometriosis. They did also confirm another condition called adamiosis, which is basically endometrial tissue not being shed out and released during menstruation, but being absorbed into the uterine wall. So kind of like endometriosis, but instead of it going in outside of the uterus and on like other organs. It stays in the uterus, but in the muscle of the uterus itself. And there's nothing that can be done for that. So that isn't really great. Just knowing that at this point, that's how I am and what I have to live with. But until they start to, they doctors start to treat women more seriously, there's just not going to be anything learned about that. So hopeful that, you know, again, talking about it, educating myself, educating others, here I am talking about it. Maybe we will research that a little bit more and try to understand why that happens to some women and not others. So overall, the surgery went great. The recovery was exhausting. I think I did mention I was prepared for pain and just like discomfort after the surgery, but I wasn't necessarily prepared for the exhaustion that was going to come from having surgery and having my body recover. And it was probably six to eight weeks before I felt kind of like myself again. Like it was a really exhausting time in terms of just energy levels, working, working normal hours, doing anything outside of like the bare minimum. And so I really wasn't doing much. And I also didn't have much to share in terms of vlogging. So it was kind of great that the camera broke. It would have just been me like lying around on the couch, which sometimes can be good vlogs. I can, I come up with things to talk about, but that was a big part of not continuing any videos or posting on YouTube because I really needed to take care of my body and reassess my priorities for my physical health, especially my mental health, going through that, learning about where I'm at physically and kind of looking at this season as a new chapter for my health. Which brings me to 2024 and all that is going on this year, which after last year and addressing my endometriosis, I feel like I'm still on my health journey because obviously it's not completely like over. My periods are so much better. 
so, 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 so much better after the surgery. So I advocate for anyone to find a surgeon you trust, number one, before doing surgery. But number two, it is worth doing because it really is like a night and day difference for me. Having almost no cramping and just having more control in my life and just more stability with the lack of pain. So that feels like I have that under wraps. But as you know, I also deal with other health things like migraines. So this year, like I did last year, last year was my endometriosis year. This year is my migraine year. I'm addressing my migraines. I, the last time I actually took it seriously, and I realized this because I'm taking it seriously again. The last time I took it seriously was about 10 years ago um, when I had seen, I think it was my fifth or sixth neurologist at the time and nothing was really working for me. I was doing a lot of advanced different treatments, medication, anything and everything that was recommended at the time for migraines. And the neurologist I saw basically told me that I need to drop out of school, I need to not work, and I need to focus on getting my pain under control. And this was in my third year of university. So I was a year away basically from graduating. And that's not an option that I wanted because for me, I was living in a different city. I wasn't somewhere where I could move in with family and continue going to school and not have the stress of paying rent. So if I were to follow that doctor's recommendations, I would have had to move from Toronto back in with my mom in a very small town that was just like not what I was looking for at that time. And in a way it felt like I'd be giving up on everything I had worked for. So I felt very disconnected from this doctor in terms of like what was a realistic approach for treating migraines. And so I kind of took things into my own hands and started working out, which I was not allowed, allowed, I was not, I was told not to do prior to that. Um, so I started working out. I, that's when I started working out with Nike two, three times a week. I became very connected with the Nike community in Toronto. I was running, doing spin classes. And this was when I felt like my strongest self, not only physically, but mentally as well. And my migraines were way more manageable at this time. I also was going through treatment for my endometriosis that removed like any hormonal migraines that I would be getting now. And so I kind of had let it be because I was doing all those things. And then I would say the last couple of years, I have not been working out that much. I am off. Well, I was off my endometriosis medication. I've been on and off different hormonal medication for the past three years, which has caused even more migraines. And I figured, you know what? It's time. It's time to see a doctor again go down this path. So I actually saw a migraine specialist at a migraine clinic about my migraines. And this was a few weeks ago. So it was actually at the very end of 2023. And the approach was to stop all my medication. So everything I was doing, like even over the counter, Excedrin, Tylenol, Advil, no more of that, no more of my migraine medication. And I really had to basically hit a reset because I have been using medication obviously for years to treat migraines and headaches. But as we all know, you become very tolerant to medication, whether it is Advil or something that's a prescription and your body doesn't necessarily know everything that's going on. Like there's a lot of different pain cycles that can form um, and reliance and overuse of even just over the counter medication. So that was the biggest recommendation was kind of like this reset and we're going to start trying different migraine medication which i haven't done in 10 years i kind of went with my one migraine medication that was always working but for me i want to make a difference the way that i did with my endometriosis i want to feel different in a year and that was really where i felt this time last year was i can't live this way with my period and my pain and my cramps like I had no quality of life and I didn't want to go another year feeling like that so I'm very proud of myself that I really focused and put a lot of energy and time uh, into getting my endometriosis addressed and taken care of into a better place and so that's what I'm doing with my migraines because I don't want to be feeling this way in another year I basically have a headache every day and I have migraines anywhere from like 10 to 15 days of the month I do have one today, so I'm actually (laughs) impressed that I'm speaking as clearly as I normally would. I was out earlier and chatting with Michael and I could not find words, which is what normally happens to me when I have a migraine. I just like lose my ability to know what I'm saying. 
I just can't find the words. So I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to wake up every day and do like a full body scan of what hurts and how much. So I have gone off all my medication. I'm taking this very seriously. I'm following this new doctor's, you know, I guess the requests, requirements, suggestions, whatever. The plan of attack is what I'm doing. And that's what I'm really focusing on this year. So I do have other goals, other things I would like to be focusing in on. But the biggest overarching goal for me in 2024 is to get my migraines into a better place the way I did with my endometriosis last year. And I'm going to be vlogging more because as you can see, because you're watching me, I got another camera. I did buy basically the same camera, just the newer version. I really liked it. It just felt comfortable. I knew the lighting, editing, everything like that, just easier for me. So I did get the same camera which turns out every influencer right now wanted this camera. So it was hard to get in all honesty, but I did secure it. We're back. Here we are. So I will be vlogging more. I'm going to be doing more, I guess like some day in my life, week in my life, special things that are happening. But I also want to do different content this year based on what you're looking for. So I know a few of you uh, did suggest just like talking more openly about my experiences, which is, this is one of them. I'm talking openly about my experience but maybe more of um, just like what I'm navigating in my early 30s, whether that's work, emotions, finding, you know, enjoyment in life, confidence in what I'm doing, all those different things. So I want to share a little bit more about that. And again, the biggest point for me for creating these videos is just showcasing that normal life is normal. It doesn't have to be Pilates at 9am and then like lunch at Air One and you know, coffee with a friend in the afternoon. That's not normal for most people. It's not even normal for me. So being able to showcase the normalcy of, of life to me is what's beautiful because then we can all feel a little bit more connected. And that's, that's really what I'm here for because building a community, whether it's online or offline is very important and feeling connected to other people and less alone in what you're going through, I think is really um, underrated in today's day and age, because a lot of the online relationships we have are just more surface level. And I wanna go a little bit deeper. And so that's what I'm here for. And also it's really fun to do vlogs and videos. For me, it's like the only way I can remember things. It feels like I have a better memory of the last year plus because I was doing vlogs over the last year. So it it's like my visual diary that I'm also posting on the internet for you to watch and be a part of. But on that note, I'm back. I'm so excited to be back. I'm so excited to create new things with you. And if there's anything you do want to see or you would be interested in seeing or you have questions about basically anything that you want to know, let me know below so that I can be a bit more thoughtful and intentional with what I'm creating this year. And we can continue building this really great community where we are just thriving in our normalcy and enjoying every moment of it. And I can't wait to see you hopefully next week's video because I'm aiming for like one a week every two weeks. So not not too much, but just enough to keep uh, keep us all excited. Like, you know, when you get excited for that one TV show that comes out once a week, hopefully you'll be just as excited for my vlogs that come out once a week. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And thank you for supporting me as I navigate through all of life's ups and downs. And I'm here for you. I okay, love you. Bye. Bye.